Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. We're going to be looking at lesson 1.5 today, rewriting equations and formulas, or literal equations is what we're mainly going to focus on. Today we're going to be looking for five things to write down in our notes, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to make sure we know is what is a literal equation and then how to solve it. A literal equation has two or more variables, so just make sure you know the difference between that and a normal one. Um, and then to solve a literal equation, you're just trying to get the variable you're solving for alone. Go ahead and take time now to pause the video so you can write these two things down for number one. And once you're done, click play to see how it's done. So here's an example. We're going to solve the literal equation 3x plus 4 x, 3y plus 4x equals 9, and we're going to solve it for y. So the first thing you're going to do is write down 3y plus 4x equals 9 in your notebook. And then you would start to get things away from the y. These 4x's I'm going to cancel out, so I just basically solved using the inverse operation. So now I have 3y equals 9 minus 4x. The last thing I need to do would be to divide everything by 3. Since I divide the left side by 3, I'm essentially dividing the right side by 3. But that really is going to look like this, 9 divided by 3 and 4 divided by 3, okay? So really, it needs to be divided by all things over here. So I still have y is equal itself, but I can simplify some more things. So I'll have y equals 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then I can just keep 4 thirds like that um, as my answer. Or you could say y is equal to 3 minus 1 and 1 third x. Both of those are going to be the same thing when you solve for y. So here's your opportunity to go ahead and solve for y in this one. Again, get everything away from the y and make sure that variable is isolated. Go ahead and take time now to pause the video so you can try solving for y on your own. And once you're done, click play. All right, so the first thing we can do is subtract 8x from both sides. I can't subtract 8 from 20 because they're not like terms, so I'm going to have 20 minus 8x equals 4y. And then to get y by itself, I'm going to divide everything by 4. Okay, so I'll have y by itself now. I can do 8 divided by 4, that'll give me 2x. And then 20 divided by 4 is 5, so 5 minus 2x is equal to y. Here's another one we're going to try, but this time we're going to solve for x. So let's go ahead and pause the video here. Make sure you can't solve any or combine like terms. And then once you're done, click play. All right, so we have for number 3, 5x minus 4x equals y. We can actually combine these like terms. 5x minus 4x is 1x. And 1x is just equal to x. So that one with number 3 is actually pretty simple. x is equal to y. This next one is a little bit different, and if you notice, both of these um, terms have x in it. So what we can do is something called factor out the x. That just means I can divide or factor out this x, which just means undoing the distributive property. So I can divide both sides by x, and really I'm just taking x and add in multiplying it by 2 plus k because x times 2 and x times k is the same thing as 2x plus kx. Now it's a little bit easier to separate that x and get it by itself. So if you ever notice that they have similar um, terms in here, you can factor that out. And then one simple step, we're just going to divide by 2 plus k as a whole. So that my answer would be x equals m over 2 plus k. Okay, here's another one. Um, we're going to do 3x plus 5x plus 5xz is equal to y, and we're solving for x. Again, you might want to consider factoring out just to see how that works for you. So let's go ahead and pause the video so you can try number 5 in your notes, and once you're done, click play. Okay, so for this one, when we rewrite the equation, we can factor out the x. So we're undoing the distributive property, so we get 3 plus 5z in parentheses. 
is equal to y. And then all we have to do is once we divide by 3 plus 5z to move it over on the other side. So x will be equal to y over 3 plus 5z. So once again, factoring out if you have a common x or variable that you're trying to solve for is always super helpful. That's going to conclude our notes for today, so just make sure you have those five things written down, and we'll catch you next time. Okay.